what transit will look like in the next five years across Washtenaw County. Uh, I think there is a meeting tonight that uh, for Chelsea, Manchester, Bridgewater, Dexter Township, etc. that area. Uh, so if you're interested in attending and providing your feedback, you can. Um, but we have started already some expansion projects. Uh, we expanded our night ride service, which is taxi ride service when our buses aren't running throughout Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti, five dollars. Um, we expanded service between Ypsilanti and Ann Arbor, so most times of the day, uh, you're not waiting longer than 15 minutes, and during rush hour, you're not waiting longer than five minutes between Ann Arbor and MC on our Route 4. And popularly, we launched our service to the airport air ride, uh, which is also, these all are improvements that came out of our 30-year planning and things that we could execute on quickly. And then you'll be seeing this month and next month that we'll be launching our van ride program, which will be a commuter car and ride sharing service uh, for employees traveling to an employer in Washtenaw County. So please participate in this planning process. It's for you, the residents of Washtenaw County. And if you have any questions afterwards, just come see me. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. A few more um, items for the introduction. Um, how many here are here for the first time at LA2M? Welcome, welcome, welcome. The format for LA2M is we will have our speaker talk for approximately 30 minutes. We then open up the floor to questions and answers. So save your questions and write them down so that uh, you can present them to Leslie at the end of her presentation. And then we give everyone the opportunity to stand up and introduce yourself, who you are, your company, or your aspirations, or if you have a particular ask, um, we will start to pass the mic after Q&A. So without further ado, I would like to introduce today's speaker, who saved us at the last minute, our hero. Leslie McGraw is CEO of Lesgo. Leslie has been involved in working with nonprofit organizations and community groups for a number of years, and her passion is bringing organizations and people together. So today's talk, Leslie is going to show us how we can build our communities through social networking. So, without further ado, let's go. Well, I'm glad that everybody stayed after you realized I wasn't Dave. <laughs> First thing, I had a nightmare. <laughs> She's not Dave. <laughs> so, um, so anyways, I wanted to speak today about the, uh, a community that tweets together stays together. And I love Twitter. Like, I don't see it as just a marketing tool. I just love being on there anyways because um, I actually hold high regard for birds, period. So I, I don't know where the fascination came from, whether it was, you know, some childhood fantasy or maybe it was because I was scared of them because of a Hitchcock flick. Either way, I think birds are much smarter than we let on. And I watched the way, like I'll just sit and watch birds and how they communicate and kind of, um, they'll talk. Like as long as you're quiet, if you notice, if you just listen, they kind of talk to one another. But they have their own system, like they know when uh, different animals come, they're kind of all go away, or if you're too loud, if you're, you know, you're a threat. Um, and they have it, they've got it pretty much figured out. And I see Twitter the same way as this uh, community that comes together um, to alert each other about what's going on in the community, what's happening in my neighborhood, what's happening in whatever community you are in. So uh, just for, um, just for purposes, if someone could raise their hand and let me know which communities do you think you're part of? Anybody? Yes. Me? Yes. Um, Twitter, Facebook, Facebook, the main one. Um, Twitter, A2B. A2B. A2B3. A2B3. The temple. The temple. 
my neighborhood. My car dealer. Your car dealer. Okay, anyone else? Yes. Toastmasters. Toastmasters. Anyone else? Mary Ruth? L.A. 2M. L.A. 2M. Okay. Right. And also Zonta. Zonta? Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's funny that nobody mentioned like their neighborhood association or their church or, um, huh? Oh, yeah, you did, you did mention your church. But things that aren't online, those are all for your communities too. I meant like all your communities that you're part of. You're part of the Ann Arbor community, your work community. Um, and so people that know me know that I tend to wear a, a couple different hats. And so some people know me as a journalist, some people know me as a writer, some people know me as a social media person, some people know me as a nonprofit person. So what I like about social media is that it, it allows me to move in and out and navigate and communicate with all these different groups. So. talk about, like I said, um, speaking about it from thinking about birds and the community. Everything is not for Twitter. So um, I was one of the first people that said, I don't know if I'm going to like Twitter. I already have Facebook. What do I need with Twitter? You know? <laughs> and so that was a failure to understand. So Twitter is supposed to be right now. What's going on in, in my community? And that, that community can be Ann Arbor, it can be global, it can be whatever your community is. But what's happening in my community? Um, so here's a little graph. So um, if you follow it across, basically, if you're in a bar or um, it's awkward to explain to your boss or your parents, it's, it's not for Twitter. <laughs> Everything else it can, can end up there. So. Uh, the so a lot of people like Facebook. Um, show of hands, how many people are on Facebook? Okay. Um, and how many people are on Twitter? Oh wow, you guys are advanced. So hope <laughs> you're on both. All right. So which one do you use more? As show of hands, who uses Facebook more? And who uses Twitter more? Okay. So, like I thought, most people use Facebook more because it's easier. You have all your friends on there and everything. Twitter, Twitter is an amazing tool um, once you get uh, um, you understand. So the first thing I want to look at is define your community. And so that's what I was asking you about. Who is your community? You know, don't think about just who's online, but think about who's your community, period. <clears throat> so when you start to look at... Um, the trends, oops. So the first thing I do is I look at these trends. You look up here on the left-hand side, how it says like worldwide twin trends. Um, you can actually choose your location by, you know, city or um, like major cities like Detroit or Chicago, that kind of thing. That's a good start as when you're thinking about your community, who are you looking at as your geo, um, geo trends? Because actually the trends, like, the, oh, by the way, trends are what's going on right now, what's talking, what's the hottest topics by a hashtag, a little common symbol. So um, they change by country, by, you know, worldwide, like some things, like Dick Clark made it worldwide. Everybody was talking about Dick Clark. But um, other things, uh, some of our holidays and such, are more um, tend to be by location. So like Sweetest Day, I used to think it was a worldwide holiday. Everybody in the world celebrated Sweetest Day, but actually, <laughs> outside of Michigan is not big. Um, huh? <laughs> so, that, so that's a good, um, you know, things to think about when you're thinking about the trends. Also, Twitter action. So you can see hashtags here, but you can also use the discover button at the top. Can you see that? The discover button will allow you to look at what's going on um, by keyword. So 
or just look and see what's what's happening, what stories are hot. And um, I was just talking to someone recently, and they said, well, you know, they're in the one industry, oops, and so they didn't understand what what's the meaning of why would you look at what's going on right now? What are the hot stories? Because what people are, it's not about them, you trying to find them, find people's interest in what you're doing, but you connecting what you're doing to what they're interested in. And so that's what Twitter is, you know, is all about. So, um, so I just, so using that, um, the discover and the trends will also help you with that. and action to your tweets. If you just want to talk about what you think about, you know, the, the latest millage or whatever, then you can really say that for Facebook. You know, um, use things that are happening right now. Use, there should be some sort of, um, I, I use these um, parameters. I look for people, places, some sort of movement, activity, a dialogue, events, or holidays. Because the idea is that you want someone to retweet or respond or get something from your tweet. Um, so if you are uh, putting out something that there's no, like they read it and then there's no reason to respond, that's not necessarily the best tweet. So, um, and I, again, I don't always know who's happening with people. Like, you know, there's certain people that are always big like Beyonce or J-Lo, they're always big. <laughs> you can always find something with them. But um, also, sometimes I'll look, like yesterday, training was Rita Oro. So I've got to read up on who Rita Oro is. <laughs> and um, also, when I say movement, like uh, four square is one good example of how you can use the Twitter to show the movement that you're moving around. As a small business professional, I think that a lot of people or entrepreneurs, a lot of people think that, oh, you must be, um, you know, sitting around in pajamas all day, or <laughs> you know, you're not working the same. You don't have maybe not have the same work ethic as someone who's working at a nine to five office. But actually, you work a lot more and a lot different, you know, different schedules, and that shows that. And um, also dialogue. So sometimes call your Twitter, your Twitter followers out. I, um, I don't know, I guess that's lame, but I would say that, call them out. <laughs> so say, you know, Joe, what's, what's been going on with your business? You know, just, just randomly pick somebody to pick on that day. Like, pick, choose that person. Um, also, let's see, yes. It's not two out of three, how you send a private message on Facebook. Oh, direct message. Yeah, yeah, DM, direct message. Direct message. Um, so a student asked, how do you, it's not intuitive to see how you send a direct message. That's direct. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a direct message, but what I'm talking about is calling them out publicly. So that yeah. would be a mention. So you would use the at sign and whatever their Twitter handle is. So like at let's go for it. Where were you last night? No, <laughs> it was a great. <laughs> Where were you at? <laughs> Where, you know, so, and then that that um, helps the person they'll respond to you. When people see that dialogue, then you know they'll jump in or oh, is caught over here. What you're talking about? Thanks. Yes. Um, still thinking about the analogy of the birds. I also notice when two birds are talking, like the other birds stop. And they listen to those two birds, and then they start talking. And then they, like, they, they kind of bounce off dialogue. So Twitter's good in that one, too. Also, events. So, um, well, we know, LA2M. So first of all, anybody here on Twitter should already have a tweet out by now um, with the hashtag LA2M, right? <laughs> I know you guys are eating. Also, um, events. Everything doesn't have to be an event as a live event such as this. It can be an event as in 
I am in this challenge, for instance, I'm doing a 90 day challenge to try to get my uh, workout in a, some sort of a rhythm instead of you know, a weekend warrior. And so it's, for these 90 days, it's an event. And so I tweet about you know, that event as it occurs. And so it has its own little hashtag. Um, uh, so she can create an event as well as, you know, also holidays. Um, I can't say what this month is, but if you look on Twitter, you'll see. <laughs> but there's always some sort of holiday. I didn't realize there's always a holiday that you can, you know, talk about. When you use that holiday and connect it with, with your business, what you have to offer, you can expand your audience. I decided not to go to the movie. I will get back to um, speaking about like how, how best to format your tweet, but I wanted to make sure I got over the core pieces. Um, the next is using third party apps and help. So how many of you use something like Hootsuite or Tweet Me or Tweet Deck? Okay, well, maybe 10, 15 percent of you guys. Um, those are good to use. You know, if you have scheduled, you know, tweets, but you don't want to rely too heavily on those. So I, I use a couple. I call them cheats. So I'm not really online all the time. It may look like it, but I'm not really. So one thing is that um, connect my Twitter account to my Facebook. So every time I post something on my Facebook page, it automatically ups, updates my Twitter. A lot of people do that with their personal page, but for me, that doesn't make as much sense because I put a lot of stupid junk on my personal page. I don't know, you guys probably don't, but <laughs> you know, just when I'm on my business page, I got my little business hat on to some degree. And so, the tweets are going to be somewhat relevant to what um, people are, are, are expecting from me, I should say. <laughs> the other um, ones, I use Quora. Quora, anytime I put out a Quora, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. It's, um, it's like a souped up version of Yahoo Answers, if you remember Yahoo Answers. So you query um, and you can actually see what the person is. So it's not just out there in the atmosphere, you can say, um, I want to know why do you have to wear white before Labor Day? And, you know, you can have these answers come in within the week, you know, whatever. And so when I post the, the question out there, it not only um, puts it on the core site, it also puts it out on Twitter. And sometimes I get the answer from other Twitter followers. Um, similarly, LinkedIn has a Twitter um, button so that, you know, as you post status, um, it, you might have remembered in the diagram I showed it said if it's boring, put it on LinkedIn. Well, I don't believe that. So, <laughs> I don't think anything should be boring. But um, if you do have things that you put, if, if it's good enough for LinkedIn, it's probably good enough for Twitter. So just add that to it. Um, so I have, I'm thinking 25 uh, third-party apps that I have. So as I'm just going about my normal daily life, it's updating my Twitter. I'm not active. Like, I don't get on my Twitter site often. So sorted by public live with some of the new ones I put on because, you know, uh, we just had to, I went to a couple workshops, so I'm covering it live and also I do live events with with the journal. Um, Cloud.com is another one that um, can you can actually decide whether you want it to um, update to your Twitter. So think about what things that you do just in general that would add an existence or presence to your Twitter. So like I said, I was doing this 90-day challenge. I have a separate Twitter account where I talk about you know, just personal stuff. 
So I have daily, daily mile dot com, which is a place where you can um, decide where you want, uh, or you, you put down like your health um, goals and what workouts you did. It automatically posts that to my Facebook and to my Twitter, so people are keeping up. So the whole idea is to automate it, but it looks people respond to me like I put it up there, you know. Uh, so I feel like that's somewhat of a success that they don't think it's a machine, even though it's. <laughs> so, and I put this up here because it always cracks me up. It's, a, it's one of these little internet jokes. And if you notice here, it says, babe, I think I'm pregnant. And the uh, AT&T subscriber you're trying to reach is no longer in service. And uh, she responds, you know you spelled you wrong. And the uh, AT&T subscriber you were trying to reach with the little uh, asterisk is no longer in service. And Similarly, you can tell the difference between a lot of times, that, that's, the, that's the downside to doing everything automated. Sometimes you take out the human aspect. So I have a couple <coughs> ways to do that. So, who that knows me? I, I use lingo, and this is all approved Twitter lingo, by the way. So <laughs> it's approved. When I say approved, like I've seen corporations use it, Coca-Cola, that kind of thing. So it's okay. No one's going to think you can't spell if you use this stuff. And it allows you to, you know, get a little bit more information inside of a short tweet. So a tweet is, you know, can take 140 characters unless you do the big tweet or Twyla. Um, and of that, 125 characters is really your max. If you want to be retweeted, you need to keep your tweets under 125 characters because some people's names can take 10 spaces or more. So you want to have room for it to say retweet at Millionaire Mom Mansions or something. <laughs> and um, you want them to be able to retweet. So the, I learned some of this stuff that's funny, it's reinvented as it's Twitter or social media, but I used to do, when I was a teenager, just, um, these surveys, huh? Just two years ago. Oh, <laughs> two years ago? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> So when I was a teenager, I used to work for a place called ITS in Washington, and we did um, surveys over the phone. And so we had to type people's answers. So everyone's crabby, you know, when you ask for surveys. So, <laughs> you know, even if it's five questions. So we had all this shorthand lingo that we would use. And so it's funny because I'm starting to see some of this emerge in the social media world. So ABT, um, Beast, Slash C is uh, short for because. If you do the, um, the capital B um, is for, you know, instead of writing out B, B4, B is the number four. And you, actually, anytime you have the word for, you can use the letter for. Anytime you have the word to, you can use the number two. Um, check, C H K, or could. Create the. It's not just for, you know, hip hop anymore. You can use it. <laughs> the um, the D A version of the, and to D tweet. Another slang term. Uh, Susan asked about direct messaging. So this is when you don't want the public to see what you're saying to someone. You can just direct message them. Um, so you could say, um, again, what were you doing last night? And just say, DM me, you know, ask them to respond to you directly. Or face-to-face uh, -face is act to f um, Some of you may know that I use the word fab all the time. <laughs> so that's short for fabulous or fave. Um, anytime that you see 
So how you can interact with a tweet, anytime that you see a tweet, you can um, respond to it or reply. You can retweet it, so it'll be shown to all of your followers. Or uh, you can favorite, or, you know, favorite. And that sets it into your, you can actually set your own little library of tweets. So I save some of my favorite blogs that are mentioned, you know, links to them. Um, sometimes I'll get certain um, quotes and I'll save them. Because, you know, sometimes we'll say certain quotes, we never know who said them. And so when I see who the original person said it, I'll just save it. Also days, so every day is a holiday on Twitter, first of all. So, oops, getting to know that, that lingo. So every night is Dark Mondays on Twitter, every Tuesday is Twitter Tuesday, every Wednesday is Hump Day, um, every Friday is Follow Friday. Yes, I know you guys know what what know what uh, hashtags are. Again, I C or I D K. Uh, I've seen people use S M H. That's more of a text thing, but you can still use it on Twitter. If people know what you're talking about. And again, it's just a question. So mention is whenever you use the at symbol and add it to the usernames. <coughs> If you ever mistweet, um, you can actually just say mistweet, put in caps, and people will know that you know you said something wrong or you misquoted or you didn't mean to say it that way. NTS, note to self, please retweet. Um, you can let people know about events. Um, so we, I think you guys kind of know, repeat. Also, TFTF is thanks for the follow. Um, at first, when I first started with Twitter, I would draft whole emails about what I was going to say to each person that friended me. <laughs> so you can actually just say TFTF and it's all good. And um, we talked about trends, tweets. Um, I'm not a tweetaholic. At least I'm not admitting to it, but um, that's what we kind of call people. So there's tweetaholic, tweeters, twitterers, tweeples. So a lot of the music and celebrities will call their constituents tweeples. <laughs> Lady Gaga always uses tweeples. Um, you, you can use instead of the long word, was. I'm not real sure why was is used as shorter than was, but it's considered a short name, I'm not sure. And whatever, WTD, um, also you can see sometimes uh, YOLO and YOYO are also used. These are from songs, actually, and they ended up in, uh, in part of the mainstream. And so YOLO, for instance, came from um, uh, an actor and hip hop artist named Drake. Some of you might know him, and it means the motto is you, you only live once. And M O T O is um, motivation. So these are when I when I put anything up here, like I said, I, not only do I use it, but I've also seen like corporations, like I've seen Myers, Coca Cola, use Yolo and Yo Yo. So. They can use it, we can, right? <laughs> um, so how this all fits is a lot of us have small businesses or entrepreneurs, and so all of our employees are not, um, are not just our regular staff. They're not your full time, we come to an office, we work nine to five. So we're out in the field. So we have our own community. So we have interns, we have volunteers. Um, to scale up to the challenge of a, of a small business or a nonprofit, a lot of times you have to, you know, pull in all these different people. 
if you get your own little lingo together, your own hashtags, your, you build your own community on Twitter, then you can help, um, you can look like a big business as a small business. And so this, that brings us back to this community that stays together. So right now we're part of this LA2M community. So the more you talk it up, the more you, you know, um, are part of the Twitter action that's going on, that also puts you in a spot of like, I'm part of this bigger thing. So, um, so that's, that's what I wanted to, to bring to you guys today. Just talk about the, the community. Any questions? I would like to thank Leslie. Lovely presentation. I love your analogy with the birds and the tweeting and watching bird behavior and how they communicate. Because your whole presentation was about communication and talking and listening and being a part of a greater community like our bird friends. So a big round of applause for Leslie. And let's open up for questions and answers at the back. Hi. Okay, so um, what was your name? Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Question. Um, you say you don't really have to tweet because do you have connection from Facebook or LinkedIn to Twitter, right? Yes. So are you writing in Twitter language on Facebook and LinkedIn? I'm confused. Okay, so... Um, that's a good question. So she's asking about when you use third-party apps, do you use Twitter language? And you can do either. So people can pull, you know, we, we focus on the hashtags, but you can also pull information from um, the keywords. So you can leave it as is, but I tend to use hashtags as I'm, so like if I said, um, ran for two miles, I put, a hashtag in front of the word ran. Even on Facebook. Even on Facebook, even on Daily Mile, even on my blog, whatever. Yeah. Susan, do you have a question? Yeah. Before I use a hashtag, I always look it up to see, see if, if it's a, somebody else is already using it. Can you just make them up? So, so, so you can, if you are, um, you can make them up, but sometimes you will bump into, you know, other people that have used them. I look up, if it's for a business, I will look it up. Because I don't want something that's already saturated, or, you know, maybe I thought it was this cool hashtag, and it's really associated with, you know, swingers club, or something. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, it might be something bad that's associated with that hashtag. Yeah. So I want to see what's out there. But sometimes it can work in your favor. So like for instance, Twitter Tuesday, I want people looking for Twitter Tuesday and there's a million of them. I'm part of the million. You know? Joe? Hi, Joe. Yeah, I have a little uh, problem. I've got a uh, uh, a new company I'm starting called Dishfish, and we're trademarking the name. And we're Dish hash, hashtag Dishfish. Problem is, there's a subscriber. Her name is Disha Ram Paul. I've already communicated with her. She has the Twitter handle Dishfish, and she doesn't want to sell it. And uh, I don't want to bombard her with stuff. If I start using hashtag Dishfish to refer to things about my business, is that going to mess her up? Is what, what's the implications of that? Oh, um, is, does she use it? Okay, so. So first of all, I know about Dish Fish. My friend from California told me about it. Um, but, yes, really yeah. needed. Yes, really needed. Wow, I think that was pretty person. But um, yeah, so I would say that if she if it's her name, then you might have to to think about that. But there can be more than one. Yeah, there can be more than one. Now, have you talked to the person? Is she, she going to be offended? Yeah, if she's not offended. If she's not. in marketing, I told her I might hire her. So. <laughs> yeah, she's going to buy it. Yeah. Or else you can think about putting some extra, you know, pre-pinned or a pin to it, you know, like dish fish marketing, dish fish small biz, or I don't know. Do we have any other questions? 
I'd like to open up the floor for a question, and that is, can anybody share with us an example of how they are using Twitter for business? Any brave souls? Thank you, Steve. It's actually not really me, but it's, um, I've been looking for a job, and one of my favorite companies is NSF International, and they actually use Twitter to send out um, any new job postings they get. I get a little thing, and if it's something I'm interested in, I can go check it out. And I like that. I'd like to see more of it. That's a great example. Leslie, thank you so much for leading our discussion, particularly at short notice. We put this presentation together post 2 p.m. yesterday afternoon. So well done, and kudos to you for doing it at such short notice. Thank you. opportunity to introduce yourself. When you do, please stand up, state your name and your company or your aspirations, or if you have an ask. And we're going to start over here with... Natalie. I'm Natalie Nairns. This is... I'm Katie Beamer. Uh, we're student uh, entrepreneurs at the University of Michigan working on a retail affiliate website right now. So. Office, but now I help a lot of uh, nonprofits with uh, websites, particularly through uh, family services, uh, the Speed Resolution Center here in Ann Arbor, and the Michigan Israel Business Bridge. And you know me, but I'm Justin Fenwick with the Ride, and just a reminder to participate in our five-year program planning process. Uh, and to see me talk about that. Hi, I'm Steve Beyer. Um, I'm here, well this is my third time here, so I guess I'm really a here guy. Um, the only thing I can say I'd like to sell is that I do a podcast called the Mac Review Cast, so if you're interested in Mac stuff, give it a shot. Hi, I'm Bob Fran, I'm a photographer with Bob Fran Photography, and I do commercial advertising and executive portions. Thanks. I'm Steve Cornell, and I help make data centers run more smoothly. I'm looking for a new job, and anybody has any ideas, let me know. Thanks. Hi, Mike Wynn with Sandler Training, where we uh, help local businesses sell more and sell more easily. And I want to tell you about an upcoming uh, user group meeting we have for Salesforce.com. Anybody here use Salesforce? Or is this meeting for you if you want to learn how to do it better, more efficiently? Um, could also be for people who are considering Salesforce. Here's something they didn't realize. Last time I looked at Salesforce.com, it was $100 per user per month. I decided for $5 per user per month, so uh, things have changed a lot. Might want to take another look at it. Um, so it's going to be May 30th uh, at Sandler Training 46. Hope to see you there. Hi, this is Nancy Shore with the Get Downtown program, and I do community programs and services for downtown Ann Arbor employees. And next week is Bike to Work Week, and we have an amazing <laughs> amount of events going on. Everything from bike commuting stations to intro bike classes to uh, awesome bike bash happening on Friday evening at the Farmer's Market, May 18th, music and food and beer and all kinds of fun stuff. So check it out on our website, getdowntown.org, to learn more. I'm Tasha Moore with Martovia Public Relations Group, and we help companies avoid media pitfalls and help them get the right kind of media coverage that helps school business grow. Amy Ma, uh, I do a website for children's books uh, publishing and web. <coughs> my name is Chris Hart with My Choice of Energy. My company <coughs> provides natural gas to residential, industrial, and commercial 
and facilities. If you want to save up to 28% on your gas, give me a call. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Jerry Markle from Managing Your Mind on State Street. I'm an educational psychologist who helps people reduce distractions so they can increase profitability. I'm going to be having a complimentary seminar in June, and I'll let you know about it later. Hi, Mary Rosicki, Harry, and our brand new website development and business consulting. Good afternoon. I've been going for a while. This is Dr. Paolo Tyco, principal owner of MPEL, a training and development company. I'm Loretta Friend with Detroit Public Television. We have an HD production truck that can multiply the amount of people that see your message at conferences or um, conventions or whatever um, by webcasting. My name is Colin Beavers. I'm the media coordinator at Forest Health Services. We are a uh, management group for Barrett's Clinics at Bariatric Specialty Hospital in Detroit. I'm Carolyn Foster, and I'm the Sales and Customer Service Management for uh, Forest Health Bariatric Program. Hi, I'm Claire Hughes, Communications, Marketing, and Fundraising Professional, working with small businesses and nonprofits. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carmen Wells Quigg. I'm a community and economic development professional, and I'm just here to learn new tricks. Hi, I'm Stacy with Bell & Villain, your local digital print shop, and I love helping Justin and the AATA and Nancy get downtown with all of their digital printing needs. Hello, I'm David Alphone. I'm with Colin and Carolyn from Forest Town. My name is Rafi Garapedian. I'm um, two other new young graduates putting together a food sharing website called fieldgoodfood.org. Hi, I'm Ross Johnson with 3.7 Designs. So we're a web design and internet marketing company. I also put on WordPress Ann Arbor, which is a free event for anybody who uses WordPress, builds sites in WordPress, has a site in WordPress. It's the last Wednesday of every month, so uh, check out WordPressAnnArbor.com. Hi, my name is Linda Baker, and I'm a matchmaker. I have lots of job seekers who come to our nonprofit looking for work, and so I'm looking for small to medium-sized companies that are maybe looking to hire and trying to make a match. That's Linda Baker. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Tosh Boosted. I do uh, SEO consulting and PPC account management with Process Concern Designs. So uh, if you have uh, questions about either, either of those or need help with either, uh, come speak to me after. Hello, I'm Angie Puno, I'm with CRVN. We're uh, a dry cleaning laundry facility for uh, insurance restoration and fire and water damage restoration. My name is Ron Raftree, I'm with the and r Total Construction over in Ipswich Landing. Uh, we do residential and commercial remodeling as well as uh, fire and water storm damage repairs. Hi, I'm Eric Chapman, uh, one half of Social Medicine's Marketing Group. We help small businesses get away from interruption-based marketing techniques and into inbound marketing. Hi, I'm Denise Walter from Michigan Ability Partners. We help uh, find homes and jobs for the veterans and the disabled. And we're having an event in May 18th. Um, you can check out our website at www.mapagency.org. Thanks. Walter and a lot of people know me here. Here's the next person. <laughs> I'm Lily Franklin. I'm going to be a summer intern for Al Dente Pasta Company in Woodmore Lane. I'm Monique Deshane. I started Al Dente Pasta here in um, Ann Arbor. We're a national brand and just have grown our business using grassroots marketing all this time, so we're still doing it that way. Hello, I'm Laura Pazahowski. Um, I'm interested in interface design and um, looking for internship opportunities and ways to learn more about the industry. Uh, currently, I'm officiating rec sports for little kids. Hi, I'm Tom Crawford, and I'm a mobile app developer, among other things. So if you need a mobile app, uh, let me know. You can also check out one of my core ones called VizChef, V-I-Z-C-H-E-F. 
Uh, also, I'm going to be teaching, uh, co-teaching a mobile app programming class this summer, starting uh, in about a month. So if you have some programming skills and want to pick up mobile, specifically iPhone and iPad, uh, come see me after. from the wireless zone, uh, Verizon dealer over on Jackson Road across from Panera. And uh, there's a lot of uh, Verizon stuff coming out uh, just the last month that will help solve your home phone and internet um, problems uh, from specifically price point um, that you may not know about. Home Fusion, Home Phone Connect, stop in and we can talk about it. Hi, I'm Joel Bergen with Fishfish. We're introducing a revolutionary new social currency that will raise money for your favorite local charity and bring customers to participating businesses. So you can catch a deal and help a cause with Fishfish Dollars. More information at fishfish.com. I'm Roger Rail. Uh, besides uh, doing the videoing here, I do it at several other organizations, including uh, A2 New Tech, which is next Tuesday. And I think they're still looking for uh, startups. So a couple of you people that I haven't uh, applied, you might want to email uh, organizers at ATV Tech and, uh, and sign up. Hi, my name is Scott Phillips and I have a website called 723 Spring Street where I blog about living in a high efficiency home which is on 723 Spring Street. So I use Twitter to supplement the blog posts. I'm Mark Johnson and I'm a marketer, educator, and architect. My company is Marketech.me. And Scott didn't tell you about the Mission Zero Fest that is coming up on June 8th and 9th. And his lead platinum home is going to be featured. It's going to be really exciting. So I hope you all come out to that. And I am a firm believer in the power of direct mail marketing. Hi, my name is Roberto Perez, president of my class. Uh, I'm also a Eastern Michigan University graduate, did my bachelor's in public relations. I'm also there currently doing a master's program in communications, focusing on interracial communications and uh, student affairs. And uh, I'm also currently the interim Midwest Regional Director for Recruitment and Expansion for Biota Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Hi, my name is Tessie Bo, and I'm the owner of ShopTiazneen.com. It's a clothing, online clothing store that specializes in fun clothing for women. We're currently looking for interns in retail management and um, social media. And we're also looking for companies to help with promotion. Hi, I'm Jasmine Moeller. I am the project manager at Ingenix Digital Marketing. And I live tweeted today. <laughs> Good afternoon, I'm Walter Ellerby. I'm an educational management professional. I also have done training and been in education for the last 13 years. Uh, Susan Harris, tech writer, in, in internet protocols, infrastructure routing. Uh, and on Twitter, I am AA Writer. I'd love to hear from you. I'm uh, Mary Lou Old. I'm an uh, LA's web manager. I'm also a freelance writer. And another thing that I'd like to mention too is um, I'm involved with a women's organization called Zonka. It's a women's professional organization 
that um, works on elevating the status of women and children locally, nationally, and internationally. And Zaza is forming an Ann Arbor chapter. So if any of you uh, professional ladies would have um, an interest in information about that, please see me. Also, if you have an interest or know someone who would be a good speaker for our group, please let me know about that as well. Thank you. Harry Sherlock from Fit Studios, and I'm a commercial editorial portrait photographer. Hi, one quick thing, and two quick things. One is I forgot to mention don't use the ampersand when you're trying to um, shorten your tweets. <laughs> and um, second of all is I'm here, my ask is I'm also the uh, volunteer coordinator for the Festival Breeder Program with the Ann Arbor Summer Festival. Recently had an announcement party. And this year we have 21 nights from June 15th through July 8th. And we're not only looking for volunteers, friendly faces, but also um, corporate team challenge uh, volunteers. So this is where you have a group. So even LA2M or your business, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, let me know and you can have a team of you and you can wear your own brand on your t-shirt or whatever else and have a good um, fellowship activity with your uh, co-workers as well as um, enjoy the festival. I am Dee Davey, Creative Ideas Marketing, and I help companies and businesses who provide business-to-business -business services, I help them improve their sales and grow their revenues. Clients come to me when they're frustrated because they know they want to grow their business, but they're not quite sure what to do. Creative Ideas Marketing, D. Davey. I am also the voice of Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing, and it's my pleasure each week to introduce our speaker coming up. Next week, we have Beth Tanahaz from Tiny Big Picture Shows, and Beth is going to be talking about using visual storytelling, in particular, using the medium of video. And she's going to talk about how to use video um, for your marketing in your business, and in particular, the structure and style that's most appropriate for your particular needs. So see you next week at Lunch at Arbor Marketing. Thank you.